Hey everybody, this is Reapy Ron, and today we're going to be doing another Killing Floor 2 list. This time we're going to be taking a look at all of the Tier 3 weapons. I'm going to be um, talking about their stats and how good they would be if you wish to um, upgrade them completely. So for the second part of this video, we're going to be taking a look at how good they are uh, unupgraded though. Because some of these weapons don't necessarily need upgrades, and some of these weapons actually fit into more loadouts without upgrades. So... Let's begin, and I'll be telling you the stats of these, and my personal opinion of where I would place them. So first up, we have the Hemoclobber. Um, we're going to go down class by class. So we're going to start with Berserker, and end with Survivalist. First weapon with Berserker is the Hemoclobber. Um, the Hemoclobber is both a Medic and a Berserker weapon. It weighs 4, it can do 80, 80 damage with its light hit, 130 damage with its heavy hit, and 40 damage with its bash hit. All of these hits count as bludgeoning damage. They also count as toxic damage um, for anything that you hit. So you can add the toxic effect to any enemy, dealing damage over time and causing them to freak out. Um, also with its heavy attack, it does a 200 damage explosion um, of healing gas for a 5 meter radius that heals all allies, including yourself with it. And this weapon is already pretty crazy. Oh, right. There's also the uh, parry and block multiplier. This weapon also has longer reach than most other melee weapons. It has a 2.3 meter reach, which is pretty nice. And it's parry and block multiplier. Um, when you parry, you have 50% damage reduction. When you block, you have 40% damage reduction, which is pretty good. Um, fully upgraded, this thing goes up to 6 weight. It gets um, faster recharges on it, and it gets 20% more damage, 10% per level. That is still pretty good. I mean, it already has really high damage, and... At 6 weight, you can still fit a lot of things with this, whether you're, uh, regardless of what else you're running with Berserker. Uh, it's, it's really, really strong. Even, uh, it's really strong unupgraded, and it's extremely strong fully upgraded. It's going right to the top of S tier. This weapon is pretty ridiculous. Up next, we have the Pulverizer here. Now, the Pulverizer is also a really cool weapon. It's a shotgun sledgehammer. Um... <laughs> And the Pulverizer, it weighs 6, it holds 5 rounds in it, um, it does 80 damage with its uh, light attacks, so its heavy attack it does uh, 145 damage unless it's loaded, and then it does 383 damage of explosion damage when you hit, and then it does 68 damage on its bash. Um, it has a 1.7 meter reach, which is still alright for a melee weapon. Um, it has the same block and parry multiplier as the Hemoclobber. Oh, no, wait, this actually has a higher parry multiplier than the Hemoclobber. This has 50% um, damage reduction when blocking and 60% damage reduction when parrying. Um, this weapon hits quite hard with its upgrades. It actually hits pretty hard <laughs> with its upgrades. It just hits harder. 10% um, increments for each upgrade, so up to 20% more damage for two more weight. That's eight weight. That still allows you to take quite a few options with this weapon. And this is probably Berserker's heaviest hitting weapon, especially against uh, Flesh Pounds, since Flesh Pounds are weak to explosion damage. Um, so it's all around a pretty decent weapon if you want to keep it. Um, light attacks give you some issue because you sometimes don't necessarily kill something, you just knock it on the ground, which can be a little bit annoying because you would have killed it with your damage, but since the knockout animation played, you don't, and you have to smack it again when it's on the ground. That I find a little bit annoying. Um, oh, also the explosion radius, I forgot. It has a 4 meter explosion radius, so it will blow up uh, everything around you too. It will do less damage than the uh, impact, but it's still more than enough to kill like stalkers and crawlers that might be all over you or little things. So it's pretty good for doing that too. I think I'm going to put the Pulverizer into A tier. It's not as good as the Hemoclobber. The Hemoclobber just has the weight advantage and the insane amount of healing that you can get from it. But the uh, Pulverizer does hit like a truck so it has that going for it if you want raw damage you can grab that all right up next we have the zweihander and the zweihander is actually a really fun weapon i really enjoy this one um it weighs seven it does 85 damage with with its light attacks 195 damage with its heavy attacks and 63 damage with its stab attack it has a 1.9 meter reach you would honestly think it'd be a little bit longer than that but it has a 40 percent damage reduction when blocking and a 60% damage reduction when parrying and it upgrades okay it gets 5% more damage with each upgrade so it goes up to 10% more damage for 2 weight that's up to 9 9 is becoming hard to fit into certain loadouts 
which can be a bad thing. It does still hit quite hard with its uh, heavy attacks, and its light attacks attack fast enough that they're still pretty relevant, as well as its stab attack is also fairly quick. So I think I'm also going to put the Zweihander, keeping it upgraded, probably an A tier. It's still a pretty strong weapon. Um, I wish it scaled a little bit better, or maybe was a le maybe one less weight, or both. But uh, for right now, it's it's still pretty strong. All right, and then Berserker's last tier three weapon is the Frostfang, and the Frostfang is pretty ridiculous. This thing weighs seven. It holds six rounds in it. It's both an axe and a shotgun and does freezing damage, which is a lot of things. So it, its damage is kind of split up into a few different ways. If you melee with it, it does 75 damage unless the target is frozen, then it does 185 damage on hit. This is slashing damage. Um, it also attacks pretty quickly too with that. And the shotgun damage, it holds, um, it shoots out seven pellets to do 30 damage. Um, so you can do 210 damage, assuming all pellets connect. You also have the ability to freeze things. Freezing things is uh, pretty nice because that means they're, obviously they can't attack you or your teammates, which is really good. This weapon also scales quite well. Um, with each upgrade, it in well, with its first upgrade, it increases its shotgun damage by 15% and its melee damage by uh, 10%. And then the next upgrade is another 10% to shotgun damage and another 10% to melee damage, bringing it up to 9 now, 9 weight, again, can be kind of difficult to fit into certain things. That being said, this weapon is just ridiculous in the amount of utility it gives you. Oh, right, the uh, parry and block multiplier, I forgot to tell you that. Uh, if you parry with this weapon, you get 50% damage reduction. If you block with it, you get 40% damage reduction, which is still perfectly fine. And just the ability to have a ranged weapon, have it be able to freeze enemies, do pretty good melee damage block with your ranged weapon which is really nice um and if anything's frozen then you do a massive buff in damage this thing is really good and i think i'm going to put it into s tier for berserker i don't think i'm going to put it as high as the hemoclobber i think the hemoclobber still gives you more just because it does give you the ability to heal and self-sustain even more but freezing things is also somewhat sustaining yourself in a way so yeah berserker starts out the list very strong with their tier three weapons. Um, all of them are great in their own way. And let's move on to Commando. So the first weapon we'll talk about with Commando is the AK. And the AK is really good compared to a lot of the other Commando weapons you've had to deal with up to this point. Once Commando hits tier three, they're getting some of their really good weapons. And the AK is one of them. The AK weighs six. It holds 30 rounds. It does 40 damage a shot, uh, which is quite good. If you're fire, it can either fire in full auto or burst fire mode. In burst fire mode, it actually almost doubles in its rate of fire, which is really good. It allows the uh, AK to, I think, do the highest amount of DPS out of any of Commando's weapons. I that might not be true with the new minigun. Miniguns might still be able to out damage it, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, with upgrades, the AK scales all right. It scales with 15% increments, so up to 30%, and then two weight, so it goes up to eight. Eight is still okay. 30% is all right. Um, it's not going to be doing as much damage per bullet as some of the other assault rifles will, but it still usually does more than enough damage, and upgrading is not a bad idea. It, it is one of the weapons that actually is pretty good unupgraded, though, too. I think fully upgraded, the AK is just... It's kind of okay. It's honestly not a weapon that I usually throw upgrades into because I think it's actually better without upgrades just because it hits that nice 40 damage. Um, and that's usually enough. So it, it lets me be a bit more flexible with it. But the AK is still pretty good. I think I'm going to put the AK in low A tier. It might be on the edge between A and B tier though. At least fully upgraded. All right, up next we got the MKB-42. The MKB-42 weighs 7, has a magazine capacity of 30. Uh, it does 50 damage a shot, has a somewhat slow rate of fire for the assault rifles. And it actually scales quite well. It scales in 20% increments. So when it's fully upgraded, it actually goes up to 70 damage a shot, which is a lot for any of the assault rifles, actually. It then goes up to 9 weight, though. 9 weight is difficult to put... A, another weapon with though especially for commando a lot of their weapons don't like to fit into 
that weight category. Um, the slow rate of fire on this does take getting used to, and it does have a decent amount of recoil too. So this weapon, although it is it is pretty strong when it's fully upgraded, so I don't know. I think I'm going to put this one into B tier. I think it's an okay weapon. I probably wouldn't take it over the 8K most of the time, but it's not bad. It's not a bad weapon. All right, and then we have the M16. The M16 is a pretty great weapon. I really enjoy it. Uh, the M16 weighs 6 weight. It holds 30 round magazine capacity. It does 33 damage per shot. Um, with its grenade, it does 230 damage on impact and then 230 damage on explosion, which is pretty good. Its explosion radius has a, well, it has a 5 meter explosion radius. And it has a pretty decent rate of fire. It also has uh, very nice sights and very low recoil, I should add. Um, it also scales okay. It scales in 20% increments, so you get 40% more damage for two more weight. Eight weight is still pretty manageable. And it's one of uh, it's one of the two weapons that I usually go for with Commando. Either I'm going with the AK or the M16. M16 is better for more consistent damage. AK is better for more uh, burst damage, I would say, because the AK does have some recoil to it, but it can actually shred scrapes pretty quickly if you use it correctly, where the M16 provides utility because you can blow up flesh pounds with it, but it's a little bit easier to kill off small things. So I'd say this one's probably right next to the AK in terms of overall usefulness. Um, both are pretty good weapons. I'm not sure if which one I'd place. I guess I'd place the M16 above the AK a little bit, but just a little bit. They're they're both very good. All right, up next is support, and let's talk about the Frostfang first with support. So support then gets a melee weapon that they can block with and still shoot with. It goes up to nine weight. Nine weight doesn't matter with support because you have so much extra weight. Uh, you can afford that doesn't make any of your loadouts particularly difficult to get so you're fine there it has the ability to freeze things which is really nice too this weapon is still probably s tier for support i think it's lower on support by a little bit than it is on berserker i think berserker gets more value out of the ranged weapon um, where support already has really good shotguns but the ability to um, block and parry is really nice to have so i don't think this is going to move from s tier um, I'm also going to keep weapons at their highest point. Um, so, yeah, still a, still a very strong weapon, though. All right, then we're going to talk about the Buckshots. Uh, the Buckshots are a Tier 3 weapon, but you likely won't see them. Um, and I want to talk about a single Buckshot as well. So let's go over the dual Buckshot stats, and then I'll tell you about the um, single Buckshot and where I'd probably place that in terms of when to get it and how useful it is. So the Buckshots fire out five pellets each. They uh, Each of these pellets do 32 damage. So if you connect with all of them, you're doing 160 damage. This is one of the lowest damages. I think it's actually the lowest damaging shotgun per shot. Um, that being said, it is still pretty decent damage, though. Um, they have an okay rate of fire. They have much better recoil now than what they used to, and not as much spread as they used to, which is really nice. They are more consistent than they used to be. They also scale all right. They scale in 15% increments, so 15% and then 30% going up. But they um, go up since they're since you're upgrading them as pistols, they go up more weight. So it's up by 2 weight and 4 weight. So they go up to a weight of 8. Now, like I said, weight really doesn't matter on support. You have plenty of uh, weight to spare. So that's not a big deal. However, these weapons don't scale extremely well. Uh, they also aren't the most consistent and dual buckshots usually aren't worth going for with support. They're just kind of weaker than the other guns. They're fun guns. They are very fun weapons to use, but they're not that consistent of a weapon. So I'd probably place them into D tier. Um, you're likely not going to go with these and you're likely not going to upgrade them completely. And if you do upgrade them completely, um, they'll be fun, but they likely won't do as well as the other weapons. Now, a single uh, buckshot, though, is also a tier 3 weapon, and it's much cheaper. It's at the 550 mark, so it's around um, tier 2 weapons. I didn't want to include it in there because it is still technically a tier 3 weapon. You can upgrade it twice. It scales the same way, 
Um, if you do that, then you have a sidearm that weighs four, and that is okay. A sidearm that weighs four might just be what you want, uh, because it is very easy to fit into supports loadouts. You can take it with virtually any of their guns and use it all right, and it's also quite good early on. Um, it's actually one of support's probably most cost-effective weapons early on. But uh, later on, like I said, it's okay as a sidearm. As a secondary, it's fine. Um, if you just had one of them, I'd probably put it maybe B tier. Like, it's still a shotgun. It still does pretty decent damage. And if you're just going to use it to kill trash stuff, it'll do just fine for that. So I guess B tier for a single one if you're going to upgrade it all the way. Um, it's not going to be your main gun, though. All right, up next is the M4. And I really like the M4. A lot of people really like the M4. It's a really good gun now. Um, it weighs six weight. It has, it holds eight rounds in the tube. It fires out eight pellets with each shot that do 30 damage. So you can do 240 damage per shot. It has a pretty high rate of fire. It doesn't have that much spread. Um, and it scales by 10% increments. So it goes up to 20% more damage when fully upgraded. And it goes up to a weight of eight. That is perfectly fine. Weight of 8 works out well on everybody, especially support, um, where you usually have extra weight. This thing is really good overall. Um, it's very consistent. It The only real downside to the M4 is that it can't reload incredibly quick. Even if you're running fast reloads, it, it still doesn't reload that fast, and you can run through your ammo pretty fast with it. Um, but... Aside from that, there's really no downside to this gun, um, so it's going to go right at the top of A tier. Very strong weapon, very good tier 3 weapon. Alright, up next we have the Medic Shotgun. The Medic Shotgun weighs 6, it holds 10 rounds. This is a clip-fed uh, shotgun rather than a single loading uh, shotgun, I guess. Tube-fed shotgun, anything like that. Um, it fires out 6 pellets to do 25 damage. So when they hit, you're doing 150 damage. This is, oh, I guess this is lower than the buckshot, huh? This is lower than the buckshot uh, per shot. However, this does still have a pretty high rate of fire, and it actually has a very tight uh, grouping, even without the tight choke ability, which is nice. You can hit things pretty far away with the medic shotgun. And of course, with its secondary ability, it can heal. It also scales decently well, too, for a shotgun. It scales in 50% increments, so it goes up to... 30% uh, more damage at max with adding two more weight. This does reduce its charge time too, uh, just like all the medic weapons, which is really nice. Um, this weapon is really, really good on support because you can heal people with it. Um, upgrading it, like I said, you go up to eight weight, not a big deal. You can still have strong weapons. And this weapon does do pretty well at uh, killing most things really. This weapon is also one of the best weapons to use the um, larger magazines with. So if you're a fan of that, um, if you like weapons like the HZ-12, this weapon, uh, the AA-12, then the uh, medic shotgun will fit perfectly with that. I mean, it does well with the faster reloads too. I'm going to put the medic shotgun probably into low S tier. I think it's below the Frostfang, but it's still really good for what it is. Um, it's very easy to fit into your loadout. You know what? Maybe I won't put the medic shotgun into S tier fully upgraded because it's better unupgraded. Since even un uh, even unupgraded, it still does enough damage to kill most things without much trouble, and you still get the ability to heal. So I'm actually going to put it into A tier. I'm going to put it below the M4. I think the M4 is actually better than it um, for fully upgrading because the M4 just scales better. Um, it actually does feel quite a bit more consistent once you uh, upgrade it all the way, at least against large things. It feels pretty consistent against everything that's not like a scrake or a flesh pound, regardless of upgrades. But it feels a little bit more consistent when you do that. The medic shotgun feels consistent throughout, but um, with its upgrades, it just it gets a little bit better. Um, still a very strong weapon, though. So let's talk about the medic shotgun for uh, medic. If you're going to upgrade the Medic Shotgun all the way for Medic, it still is a pretty good weapon. It's one of your highest damaging on-perk weapons, um, so that can be a tempting option. That being said, it's also still pretty good even if you don't upgrade it. Um, I don't know if I'd really move it from its spot. I think it's okay still right there with Medic, um, fully upgraded, because you can pair it with um, 
like the assault rifle or the submachine gun or just about any other weapon when it's fully upgraded even. So I think A tier is still okay for it. Um, doesn't necessarily need upgrades, but it's good with them. So I think I'm just going to keep it right where it is. All right, and then we have the uh, HRG Heal Thrower. The Heal Thrower is an interesting weapon. Um, it weighs 7, it has a magazine of 100, it sprays out um, at the same rate of fire as uh, the Flamethrower and the Cock and Burn. So pretty good. It can poison all of enemies, all the enemies that you hit. It also has splash damage, which um, affects all the enemies that you hit with it. Uh, this also heals all allies. This is actually one of the cheaper tier 3 weapons too, coming in a thousand dosh, which is pretty nice. Uh, it scales pretty well too with its upgrades. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you it's base damage. Its base damage is 27 damage a hit. With upgrades, it gets 15% and then 30% more damage. That is all right, and it goes up to more weight at max. So that's nine weight. Nine is kind of hard to mix weapons with. You can still take the medic SMG or the medic uh, pistol if you'd like to have another medic weapon with this. Um, this weapon is okay, fully upgraded, but I don't think it's as useful as some of the other medic weapons. Um, I feel like this one's a better one to take early on and maybe get rid of rather than hang on to. So I think I'm going to put this one into C tier. It's still, well, I think I'm actually going to put this into B tier. It's pretty good. Um, being able to heal your allies is always awesome. And being able to kill small stuff pretty effectively is also pretty good. It just, it doesn't scale the best with upgrades. So B tier. All right. And then we also have the Hemogoblin. The Hemogoblin is also a pretty good weapon. It's a pretty strange weapon. Um, it weighs seven. It holds seven rounds in it. It does 100 damage on direct hit, and then it does damage over time with its bleed effect. Bleed effect also adds uh, multiple effects, so it causes damage over time, toxic effect, uh, reduced enemy movement speed, reduced enemy damage. All of those things are pretty good. Uh, it also scales pretty well, too. It scales in 20% increments, and as a lot of people have pointed out, this is one of the best um, healing dark consumptions because you get more healing darts with this that heal more than the other tier three weapons. Um, or heals more than most of the other medic weapons, I should say. Up to nine weight when it's fully upgraded is not really the best. It's okay with medic because you can still run like the medic SMG and that works out pretty well or the medic pistol. Um, this gun is actually pretty strong fully upgraded. Um, it might be one of medic's best weapons if you're going to fully upgrade them. Uh, I don't know if I want to put this into S tier, because if you are fully upgrading this, this does do a lot for the team. I think I'm going to put it at the top of A tier. I think I'm going to put it above the medic shotgun and a little bit above the M4. It's pretty much right on the edge of being S tier, I would say. Uh, if it weighed one less, it would pretty much be S tier. Or maybe if it held a couple more rounds. It does have somewhat of a slow reload too, which is kind of annoying. But still, pretty strong weapon if you want to fully upgrade it. Alright, and then let's talk about the Mine Reconstructor. The Mine Reconstructor is kind of a odd weapon. <laughs> um, it's always felt sort of strange to me. It weighs 8, it holds 12 rounds, it does between 30 and 300 damage depending on how long you charge it up. Uh, these ball, these goo balls can also sit on the ground. If any enemies step across them, they blow up similar to bloat vomit for players. They spread to all enemies, they cause toxic damage, they can heal allies. Um, this weapon is, is just kind of strange to me. Um, it does scale all right, though. It scales in 15% increments up to 30% for two more weight, which goes up to 10. 10 weight does make it more difficult, though, because that, again, you can go with Medic SMG or Medic Pistol. Both those are fine weapons um, if you wanted to do that. Um, but this does limit you more on what you can take. With the other weapons, you could always go off per... Uh, easier too because medic doesn't necessarily need to always have just medic weapons um this weapon is just kind of okay fully upgraded it's nothing way special in my opinion 
It's not bad though either. I'm going to put it into C tier. It's okay. Um, I feel like it's kind of better without upgrades though. All right, moving on from Medic, we're going to move to Demo. And Demo already has a few tier, tier 3 weapons up here. So let's talk about the Pulverizer for Demo. Um, the Pulverizer fully upgraded goes up to 8, which makes it very difficult to put other weapons with you. Um, it does hit like a truck, even more so with Demo than with Berserker, because it does scale just incredibly high. Um, it does also give you a weapon that's good for blocking, which is nice because it makes you more tanky. Now that being said though, it's usually not worth putting the upgrades into Pulverizer. Um, Pulverizer is also not a weapon you want to grab right away as demo. You want to already have a weapon set up and then get Pulverizer as your second weapon, um, provided that your primary weapon can do its job all right. So it's okay for that. Um, it's not as good on uh, demo as it is on Berserker, though. Um, I mean, for just its raw damage alone, I think I'd probably put it into C tier. Um, it'd probably be higher up if you were, like, guaranteed to get, like, the King Flesh Pound, though. Because this weapon just can, can just wreck him, especially his demo. Then you also have a... Uh, defense if he comes charging at you. So the other one we have is the M16 and the M16 fully upgraded on demo is okay as well. Um, I don't think it's as good as it is on commando. Commando can make better use of it than demo can. However, demo makes okay use of it. It still is a machine gun, which is useful. You can kill a lot of small stuff easily with it. The grenade is still pretty capable of killing most large things. Um, actually, just somewhat recently, I did do a m16 only run on hell on earth with demo and didn't have any problems with it i'd probably put it like into b tier for demo it's an all right weapon um maybe not one that you necessarily want to upgrade again it goes up to like eight weight which is kind of problematic for demo demo just has a lot of heavy weapons and it's kind of hard to build all the loadouts around them so let's talk about the uh seal squeal so the seal squeal for demo is uh interesting <laughs> so the seal squeal is one of my favorite weapons and it is a pretty fun weapon to use um it weighs seven it has a five round capacity you get 30 rounds extra which is relevant because you don't get the most ammo with this weapon um it has a pretty slow rate of fire it does 125 damage on uh direct impact with the harpoon and then it does 250 damage on explosion with a six meter radius of explosion you can set off the uh, explosion with the secondary fire, or you can wait for it to go off naturally. Um, this weapon fully upgraded goes up to nine weight, and then it has uh, an increase in damage by 30%. It goes in 15% increments. Um, this weapon also hits quite hard. It's pretty easy to kill most large things with it. Uh, but nine weight does limit you quite a bit on what you can carry. It might not be the weapon that you necessarily want to upgrade fully, but when you fully upgrade it, it does destroy most things that you're fighting, provided you have ammo. Um, so I think I'm going to put this into, I'm going to put this at the top of B tier, I think. Um, a lot of promise from it. If it had, if it held more ammo, uh, I think it would go up quite a bit more. Um, or if it didn't do friendly fire damage, it would go up a bit more. That's also another kind of downside to this weapon is you can blow yourself up with it. Um, I should have mentioned that you can't hurt yourself with the pulverizer and it's kind of difficult to hurt yourself with the M16. So that, that's another plus to it. But yeah, these weapons I would probably put into B tier. And then let's talk about the, the crazy weapon here. This is the HRG Kaboom Stick. The Kaboom Stick is the double barrel, but for demo. And instead of doing 500 damage with both barrels, like the double barrel does, this one does 530 damage with one barrel, assuming you hit with all pellets. Because it fires out 10 pellets that do 15 damage uh, on impact, and then another 38 damage of explosion damage. You can fire up both the barrels and do 1060 damage with this weapon unupgraded. It also scales higher than the uh, double barrel too. It does come in at six weight though, so it is one weight heavier, but it goes up by 15% increase as well, 30%. And 30% of a thousand is a lot of damage. 
Um, goes up to eight weight, which is okay. You can fit uh, more things with eight weight than you can uh, with weapons that we talked about with nine. That's pretty good. It hits absolutely amazingly hard. It doesn't necessarily need to be upgraded. This is also going to go right into S tier four, uh, tier three weapons fully upgraded. This thing is just crazy. It's crazy without upgrades. It's crazier even. It's even crazier with upgrades. So, yeah, that thing's going up there. So the first fire bug weapon we'll talk about is the Mac Ten. The Mac Ten is a full auto submachine gun. It holds uh, thirty round or thirty two rounds in it. It weighs four. It does twenty eight damage a shot plus fire damage. Uh, it has a very high rate of fire like most submachine guns do. Uh, fire damage also uh, does damage over time and more so to certain enemies and whatnot. And it scales okay. Um, each upgrade gives it 15% more damage. It takes it up to a weight of six. Six weight is perfectly fine. Six weight is actually really good. You can put quite a few weapons with this fully upgraded and it does hit decently hard for a submachine gun. Um, it's a pretty good weapon on Firebug. Firebug makes really good use of it. Um, fully upgraded, it's still pretty good. I like it better without upgrades, but I think it's still a pretty strong B tier. Um, I think it's actually better unupgraded though for Firebug because 4 weight allows you to have some really insane loadouts with this thing. So still really good uh, if you decide to upgrade it though. Then we have the HRG Scorcher. The Scorcher is the grenade pistol, but it fires out broken flares with its primary fire. You hit something and it can punch through it. Uh, anything that it hits, it burns and deals damage over time to. Anything that you fire the secondary, well, when you fire the secondary fire, it drops uh, ground fires across the ground, burning all enemies. That's pretty good right there. The flare's impact is 333 damage. Um, the broken flares impact is 70 damage and then the fire damage over time is kind of hard to calculate like all fire bug weapons. Um, it actually scales pretty well too. It goes from, oh, I didn't tell you it's weight. It goes from four weight up to six weight and it uh, increases each level by 20% more damage. So it goes up to 40% more damage at six. That's still pretty good. It fits into still quite a few loadouts. It hits pretty hard. Um, it's a pretty good weapon if you want to upgrade it. It may not be the top tier weapon though. Um, this is another weapon that I think is actually better not fully upgraded. Because once again at 4 weight, you can fit it into a lot of loadouts. Um, but at 6 weight, you can still fit it into quite a few. Um, I'm going to put this right next to the MAC-10. Um, uh, maybe the MAC-10 a little bit higher. Whoops. But... They're both probably like B tier weapons if you want to upgrade them all the way. They're still pretty good. All right, and then we have the flamethrower. The flamethrower is uh, the big brother of the cock and burn. This weighs uh, seven. It holds 100 fuel in it. It has the same uh, rate of fire as the cock and burn. It does 18 damage uh, on hit as well as five uh, splash damage and then 10 damage on ground fires. This can also start ground fires extremely easy. Uh, this also has longer reach than the Cock and Burn 2 in terms of how far its flame goes, uh, which is quite nice. And it scales all right. Um, fully upgraded, it gets two more weight, so it goes up to a weight of nine. Nine can be kind of a problem when you want to upgrade uh, certain other weapons. And with its damage, it goes up by 15% and then another 5% when it's uh, fully upgraded, going up to 20%. That's still all right. This is still a pretty decent weapon fully upgraded. It honestly doesn't need to be upgraded at all, though. Um, it's still another one of these good weapons that you don't need to upgrade. Um, and I think I'm going to put it probably also into B tier with the other firebug weapons. Um, that being said, I do really like the fire, the flamethrower. I think it's one of firebug's best weapons. And unupgraded, I think it's actually better than when it's upgraded just because you have more options than for loadouts. So you can make a more well-rounded loadout. And that's what I, that's kind of what I want this list to come across as. Um, certain weapons just are insane. Certain weapons are just really good um, by themselves. And then certain weapons go really well together with other weapons, like all the firebug weapons. And um, unupgraded might fit into, might uh, help out more play styles too. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, then our last firebug weapon is the incinerary rifle. 
This is the Fire M16, which does everything that the regular M16 does, but with fire. Um, so it fires out fire grenades. It does fire damage over time. It has the same damage as the regular um, M16. It has the same rate of fire. It has pretty much the same sights. Um, the only real difference is the fire grenade over the explosive grenade, which the fire grenade does uh, 230 damage on impact, 100 explosive damage on impact, and then does fire damage over time. Uh, also spawning ground fires. Ground fires do damage over time as well. And it scales by 20% each level going up to 40% with two extra weight. It goes up to eight weight. That is still all right. Um, this is probably another like B tier weapon with firebug. It upgraded. It's pretty good. Um, unupgraded. It's also pretty good. So I think it's another one that's just better unupgraded because it does allow you to fit more things in, which is really cool that a lot of firebug weapons actually do that. Um, where some of these weapons excel more if you put upgrades into them, um, like some of these guns. But if you don't upgrade them, they're still pretty strong uh, on their own. So I think that's where I'm going to put all of Firebug's weapons. It's kind of odd that I'm going to cluster them all like that, but I think that's kind of where they belong when they're fully upgraded. All right, so up next we have Gunslinger's weapons, uh, which are actually only two this time which is a bit interesting. We have the dual desert eagles and the dual desert eagles are pretty great. They weigh four. They hold 14 rounds. They do 98 damage a shot. They have a pretty fast rate of fire and their upgrades are pretty good. They upgrade by 25% with their first upgrade and then 15% with their last upgrade. They do go up by two weight and then four weight since they're dual weapons. So they go up to eight weight. Eight weight is still all right. You can still play around that. Um, with Gunslinger because you will likely have another pair of pistols and these weapons are one of the highest damaging guns that Gunslinger has. They do high damage, they have pretty good piercing, and they have a really high uh, damage per second. These weapons are really good and they probably they probably belong into S tier when fully upgraded. Uh, even unupgraded they're pretty good but with fully upgraded they're even better. So they're going to go up there. Our other tier three weapon is the dual rhinos. Dual rhinos do, um, well, dual rhinos hold 12 rounds. They weigh four. They do 75 damage on hit plus 80 damage of shrapnel. They fire, the shrapnel can also be three shards and it bounces around and hits things similar to like the nails from the nail gun. Um, they have a pretty high rate of fire as well. And they are a very interesting gun. Um, they also scale the same as the Desert Eagles, so they do have pretty high damage and pretty high damage per second as well as very high damage potential, but damage potential doesn't always pay out. Um, I think they're an okay weapon to fully upgrade, but I don't think they're nearly as good as the Deagles. I'm going to put them probably in B tier as well. Um, maybe right there. They're still pretty decent, but not amazing. So I think I'll put them there. All right, then we have uh, sharpshooter weapons. So we have the M14 first. The M14 weighs seven. It holds 20 rounds. It does um, 80 damage per shot at an okay rate of fire. It scales all right too uh, with 15% increments going up to 30% more damage for two more weight. That's up to nine. Nine, once again, does make it difficult for you to use certain weapons. Um, that being said, you can still pair it with something like the crossbow and have a pretty high damage weapon if you're willing to not upgrade the crossbow. Um, the M14 fully upgraded is fine. Not as high scaling as some of the other sharpshooter weapons. I would probably put this eh, somewhere in A tier. It's, it's still pretty good. The Mosin also weighs seven. It holds five rounds in it. It does 250 damage a shot. Um, but it can also stab with its bayonet doing 100 damage. It has one of the longest reaches out of any of the melee weapons at two and a half meters. And it has a pretty low rate of fire. Um, with its upgrades, it also scales as uh, much as the M14, so 15% and then 30%, going up to nine weight. Um, the Mosin, I like quite a bit... The Mosin, I like quite a bit. Uh, really high damage. You also get the ability to block with it too, which I should say. 40% um, damage reduction when blocking. 50% when parrying is great. And um, 
being able to stab things is super useful for killing all the small stuff. It's really good, and it's high damage is pretty nice, too. Since it has higher base damage, it scales better. Um, I think I'm going to put the Mosin higher up into A tier. Um, I think below the M4, but above the Medic Shotgun, I think. That seems about right. All right, and then we have SWAT's weapons. So let's talk about the MAC-10 for SWAT. Uh, the MAC-10 still has a good weight. Um, at 6 weight, it's still fine to load with, I think, any other uh, SWAT weapon. So it does give you a, quite a few options. Um, it does pretty decent damage. Its fire damage is nice. Um, and it scales all right, too. Um, for SWAT... I think I'd put it at the top of B tier for SWAT. I think I'd move it up a little bit for SWAT than I would for uh, Firebug. I don't know if I'd put it above that, though. Um, you might just want to go with some of the other submachine guns over it. So let's talk about some of the other tier 3 submachine guns. Starting with the nail gun. Uh, the nail gun is pretty crazy for SWAT. It weighs 5, it holds 42 rounds, it does 40 damage a nail, and it can fire out 3 nails with its uh, primary fire or switch over to its secondary fire where it fires out 1 nail at a time. If you're firing out 3 nails, it has a slower rate of fire. If you're firing it 1 nail at a time, it has a higher rate of fire. Uh, nails can also bounce and pierce through multiple enemies. This is probably one of SWAT's best weapons. It also scales well, 15% uh, and then 30%. It does increase weight more than other weapons, though. It increases it by 2 weight and then 3 weight when you upgrade it. So it goes up to 8 weight. 8 weight is still alright. Um, it's still a pretty good weapon, and for SWAT, it's honestly one of their best weapons. So I think I'm going to put the nail gun actually into S tier. Um, it's such a good weapon on SWAT that it's probably one of their best weapons, and I think it belongs into S tier for them. Um, it might not be as good as some of the other A tier weapons, uh, comparing them to just the nail gun itself, but comparing them to the other weapons in the class, I feel like it still probably belongs in S tier for SWAT. So I think I'm going to put it there. Um, kind of an odd place to put it because like, I could see somebody saying, well, the, the nail gun isn't as good as the medic shotgun or it isn't as good as the M4 or it isn't as good as the... Hemo Goblin, but all of those classes also have pretty good weapons. Oh, I forgot to talk about the Hemo Clover for Medic. I should probably do that. Uh, Hemo Clover for Medic is still probably, it's either like, it's probably A tier, fully upgraded. Um, you usually don't take it with Medic as much, and you don't upgrade it, but it's still pretty strong even if you do. Um, so that's where I'd put it. Let me just throw that one in there. Sorry, I forgot about that one. The UMP is one of SWAT's highest damaging weapons per shot. It weighs 5 weight, it holds 30 rounds, it does 25 damage a shot, or 30, 45 damage a shot, sorry. Um, and it has a pretty decent rate of fire. Slower than some of the other submachine guns, and it scales in kind of weird increments. It scales by 13% and then 11%, so it goes up to 24% uh, for 2 more weight, so it goes up to 7. 7 weight is not bad. It has pretty high damage. Um, it's a pretty good weapon to fully upgrade. I don't know if it's, um, it's probably somewhere into high A tier. Maybe just blow the nail gun right here. Um, still a very strong weapon. Probably not as useful as the nail gun in a lot of situations, but it is still a very good gun to take. It's not bad at all. All right, and then we have the P90. P90 is a pretty fun gun. Uh, it weighs five, it holds 50 rounds, it does 30 damage, it has a pretty high rate of fire. And it is another weapon that scales kind of weird. It scales in 14% increments, so it goes up to 28% more damage at 7 weight. That's still fine. Um, 7 weight is okay. And it's not bad fully upgraded. It probably won't be your main gun, but it makes for a pretty decent secondary. So I'm going to put it right next to the MAC-10 for SWAT. Um, I mean, I could see you maining either of these guns and then taking either of these guns as secondaries. That would be fine. Or potentially taking both of these. Um, whatever it might be, these all are pretty decent overall. Um, and then we have one last tier three weapon, which is the freeze thrower, which is survivalist. Now the freeze thrower, uh, weighs seven. It holds 100 ammo. It does 10 damage on direct hit with its main fire, or it can fire out the second ability, which is firing out shotgun pellets, um, that are frozen. Uh, firing out 12 of them that do 20 damage. This also has splash damage on it. It also does ice damage on the ground. 
which is similar to fire damage, I guess, and it can freeze things. It's overall a pretty okay weapon. Uh, with upgrades, it goes up actually quite a lot. Uh, its primary damage goes up by 40% increments, going from 40 and 80%, and then its secondary fire goes up by 15%. So it goes up to 9 weight. Um, it's, it's kind of a strange weapon. It's pretty good for its utility, and if you want to use it all just for its utility, upgrading it's okay, but you also don't necessarily need to upgrade it for its utility. It's kind of better unupgraded. And being fully upgraded, I think I'm going to put it into C tier. Um, it's just not, like, it's probably C tier if you're not running Weapon Harness, I should say. If you're running Weapon Harness, where you have more weight, then it can be a pretty good backup secondary support-ish weapon. And it would probably and it would probably go up to B or A tier then for that. If you're gonna run it with uh the medic vest though, medic uh grenades, whichever one that's called, it's it's probably not as useful in that situation. So I guess this is where I'd put all the weapons in tier three if you were going to upgrade them and keep them with their respective class. So some of these weapons kind of turned out strange. Um I think certain weapons are technically better than others. If I was just going to do a comparison of which weapons are the best, I would change this list around quite a bit, but that's not what this list is about. This list is about which tier three weapons make the most sense for you to grab. And as you can see, most tier three weapons are pretty good um, with a few exceptions. So yes, tell me what you thought about this list. And if you'd like to see other killing floor two lists, we have a couple suggestions like, uh, maps, which I think will be a really cool idea. Uh, perks overall with each class. I think that's going to be a, a cool list to make too. And then we're also going to be doing tier three and tier four weapons. I won't be splitting tier or sorry, we're going to be doing tier four and tier five weapons. I won't be splitting those into two videos though, because you're like the difference in upgrading a tier four, you're probably going to grab a tier four and then upgrade it if you can. But if you can't, then they usually only scale by like 10 or 15% more damage with one more weight so interesting but i i don't think it's worth making a two-part video out of those so anyway hope you guys enjoyed this thanks for showing up and watching this thanks for supporting the channel i really appreciate all the likes the follows the subscribes recently um and i will see all of you guys in the next video until then stay cool and bye